Hey everybody, so this video is being recorded live on Facebook. We're in our pottery office right now. This is where we pack and ship everything and set it for pickup for the post office. And I'm gonna wait for some people to join the video and then uh, I've got some, some books I wanted to talk about. These are some of the newest wall platters. This one's not very new, but that one just got finished last month. Let me flip the camera around. Really happy with how this one turned out. And that's kind of a first generation lunar platter. Looks like some people are joining. Cool, we're just in the pottery office right now where all the magic happens, where we pack and ship pottery to people's doorsteps. Give me a second here. Okay, so this is being recorded live on Facebook, so I will do some Q&A if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, I'll try to repost this video in case you don't catch this live version of it. How's everybody doing today, if you're watching live? Awesome. Where's Sienna? She's taking a little break. Um, okay, so... I titled this video Working Towards Mastery um, because of, I just noticed it was a lot of the titles of some of these books uh, that we're giving away this month. Um, these are eight different books that are some of my favorite books and I paired each one with a cosmic mug um, that are gonna go out to eight different people. Got a box of cosmic mugs down here. Um, and they all inspired the art in a little bit different way. Uh, so the first one, a Potter's Book by Bernard Leach. This book was written in 1940. There's Leach on the back cover, and they've done multiple reprintings of this. But he had this quirky idea in the 20s and 30s and 40s, even before that, uh, that he would set up a pottery studio and dig a lot of his own materials out of the ground and make lots and lots of pots in production, um, and that's all he would do every day. And he, it was kind of a family business, and he hired a lot of other workers. And it's, he was also more of an illustrator than a potter in some ways. Just in, when you open, this is a really beautiful edition of the book. Um, these are all glaze paintings with glazes and stains, but it's all on clay. And this, uh, the first chapter is called Towards a Standard. And I actually have it tattooed on my leg. It's uh, on my kicking leg. He has a, a kick wheel that he designed called the Leech Wheel. Uh, Bernard Leach kick wheel and he gives the designs in this book and he goes through the first chapter is all about like what makes a good piece of pottery what makes a bad piece of pottery and what how do you distinguish those things um, even with industrially made things he even talks about factories um, and compares like there's nothing wrong with like an expensive car because they still had that in 19, 1940 when this book was written he talks about a Rolls Royce and how that's just a product of intellect that's a uh, that fancy machine is exactly that, but it doesn't say anything about the hand, and pottery should say something about being handmade and handcrafted. Um, and then the rest of the book, after the, <clears throat> after the first chapter, he goes on to talk about pottery and history, and he's, <coughs> excuse me a second, he talks about the Sung Dynasty, this one period in Japan, like a thousand years ago when these really good pots were being made, um, and then how to set up a pottery studio. So I even have, there's a drawing in here of how to set up like a medium-sized studio, and we plan to build a studio kind of like that. So we're gonna pair that one with a cosmic mug. And the second book, I think it's the only soft cover book, it's called Mastery by an author named Robert Greene. Um, these are all nonfiction. I've just been really into nonfiction books lately. I've got two copies here because this is the one I'm giving away, but this is this one's mine, and I kind of I really mark up the pages in books when I read them because it's just how I absorb these things. Um, but this one's about like how do you work towards getting really good at something? Um, what happens when you spend ten thousand hours doing something? What happens when you spend twenty thousand hours doing something? And he goes through all these examples of people who have done that and. 
um, how they've been able to carve out little niches of how to make a living in their in their chosen field. Um, whether it's uh, inventors like Thomas Edison and turning points when he, you know, his factory burned down and the story of that, or someone like Teresita Fernandez. She's a, a sculptor who's working today in, uh, I think she's mostly in New York City, and how she carved out a niche in sculpture, which is mostly like a big macho male dominated industry and she won uh, a lot of awards and grant money and has a thriving career in um, carving out her own niche in that field because she worked towards mastery so i've read i've listened to this audiobook twice and i've read it once and i'm, I'm going through it a second time uh, my favorite quote so far is he's talking about uh, the creative process it's deeper in the book so he, he goes through like if you're just picking a career like you're still a student and you need an apprenticeship phase or the the professional phase when you start to gain momentum in your career and how to approach these different parts of your career. So this is from the chapter uh, the dimensional mind the creative active phase of your career a little bit later in your career you can see it's a little later in the book he says you must embrace the slowness of a process as virtue in itself. We go really fast in today's world with social media sometimes um i mean i was making pottery before this and now i'm like you know i spent hours just not talking just making pots and here i am like talking constantly um so it slowness i thought that was interesting because we always we don't really go slow very often in today's society but it comes to when it comes to creating creative endeavors time is always relative whether your project takes months or years to complete you will always experience a sense of impatience and a desire to get to the end. The single greatest action you can take for acquiring creative power is to reverse this natural impatience. Take pleasure in the laborious research process, the slow cooking. Um, and that just resonates with making pottery. If any of you have tried to make pottery, you know that it's like, it can be really difficult when you start out and it's hard and it takes forever. Um, so I, that is, all these ideas filter into like this medium sized coffee mug. So that's why I'm pairing each different book with a mug because I've read all of these and like it took a while to get through all of these. Um, but they're all filtering into the ideas of this piece of art, this kind of medium sized mug. Uh, the third one out of eight different books. Sorry, I've got some notes here I'm looking at. If there's any questions, by the way, uh, shout them out. I'm happy to answer. But the third book is called Mastering the Potter's Wheel by Ben Carter. Um, I've met Ben a few different times. We actually support his Patreon because uh, he has a podcast where he travels all over the world. So we kind of help him travel to interview potters about their pottery studios and how they do what they do and so he wrote a book that i just got on amazon this one i think i got signed from him to joel um nice photo of some pottery tools there on an electric wheel and i always recommend this to people when they're starting out first thing i recommend is you go take a class um i only have one neptune mug right now so it's going to be a while that's the only one neptune with the nipple uh from the side fired glaze but I always recommend when people start out pottery, they, first you take a class from someone that you, you know, you want to learn how to make their pots um, or their style of pottery. But then it's, you know, read as many books as you can. A potter's book, again, is one of my favorites. But this one for beginner, for beginner pottery techniques, Mastering the Potter's Wheel, I think this is a great one. I mean, just a simple photo on posture and why it's important to straighten your back can give you years and years of more pottery making. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I still got, the thing I got from this book mostly was uh, how he approaches, I'm trying to find the photo here, but how he approaches posture. Like after spending five hours hunched over a pottery wheel, um, he gave me, there's a couple photos, I can remember one photo of him just like putting his arms up like this, and I did that for like 20 seconds in my studio. And, oh man, it just felt so good as a stretch. So I'd recommend that for advanced potters too, mastering the potter's wheel. Uh, the fourth out of eight books, this is another one that I've got two copies here because uh, one of them is my copy and I kind of, I do that to my books. Did anybody ever dog ear your books? But I do that like all the time. It's just how I absorb things and like mark the pages. Um, 
because if you if you just read through a book quickly but you can't recite anything from it you can't act on it then um with nonfiction books for me i just think that's kind of sad i just really like to be able to to remember the passages from perennial seller and why that um why that's important why i decided to read it in the first place instead of just letting these things pile up so at first i didn't really like the title of this book perennial seller because i was like it's kind of salesy but it's it's about an object not a person it's about um uh the things in our world that year after year are still around um the the example that i really liked was the shawshank redemption you ever seen that movie I grew up and it was on TV all the time. Well, apparently it like flopped at the box office. It didn't really do very well. Um, but over time, because it was such a good movie, because it was so well written, because the storyline, uh, the hero's journey, you can find it on TV almost anywhere, almost any time of day. Um, so that one really resonated with me. And he talks about uh, like early in this book, it's the creative process and you must have a reason a purpose and that's got to be your starting points and gives lots of good reasons for that because you're there's a truth that's been unsaid because your family depends on it because the world will be better for it and then a bunch of bad reasons because you want social media likes because you think it would be interesting um that will not remotely be enough uh so this is one of my favorite books um i've read this one more times than mastery i think uh, especially when you start to get good at something like pottery, if you're, if you're making some pots, you can make like two or 300 pots, which after a while you just make so many things in pottery, they start to pile up. So you're like, okay, why am I doing this? And maybe I should spend more time and just make like a couple pots and they should be better. Um, you must have a reason and a purpose for why you want the outcome. Uh, so many times I'll see potters, um, especially professionals who start to get into the field and they'll just kind of go on autopilot and they'll just make lots of things over and over again. But that core foundation of why it can, you know, it's a big difference when you spend an hour making 20 mugs or an hour making one mug. Um, and they all have different, you know, that's just at the beginning of the book when you get to positioning and marketing and how to treat marketing with the same craft as you treated your pot. Um, this has been really helpful for, for at least telling our story about the Cosmic Mugs and building a whole website around them, CosmicMugs.com. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Shawshank Redemption is great. Um, um is the sound in dumb. I gotta stop saying that. AJ Jacobs, thanks a thousand. Skinny little book, easy read. Didn't this is not my copy, right? Yeah, this will go out into the world. Uh, it's about tracking. A cup of coffee so a little cup of coffee coffee bean and the plant from where it was grown and the whole idea of this book is where does your cup of coffee come from I'm gonna take a sip of coffee while I describe this one so he goes to I think it's Guatemala or maybe it's Venezuela I can't remember if it's North or South America but he goes to a family where some beans were grown and watches um, this local, it's this New York City coffee shop, really small place. He goes with the owner to a Spanish speaking country where the beans are grown and they negotiate how many beans they're gonna buy to take to this roastery and coffee shop. Uh, and they like sit in a circle in the jungle and negotiate and then they have a meal together and then he goes back to New York City and the beans that they're growing are sent uh, to this coffee shop that roasts them and serves a $2 cup of coffee. He talks about why isn't that a $25 cup of coffee um, and what goes into everything uh, from the lids uh, to the liquid, like everything in our system, he even goes to a, a steel factory. Um, so thanks a thousand. It's about being, he calls it a journey of gratitude uh, for just what makes that cup of coffee possible. I'm trying to remember the part where he said, like, honestly, I'm surprised it doesn't cost $25 for a cup of coffee based on all the industry that's involved in just getting this delicious, hot, tasty, bitter beverage um, to, I, I just got this in Minnesota, right in the middle of the United States uh, for $2 at the local blend. Um, so it's really cool to see how, okay, I wanted to show how gratitude 
can be life-changing by thanking the barista, the lid designer, the South American farmer, with South America, the trucker who hauled the coffee, and all the folks who paved the road for the trucker. So he literally calls these people on the phone and thanks about 1,000 different people. And obviously, uh, I thought that was just, we can all practice more gratitude in our life. So I thought that was a good pairing to just give out into the world. The seventh out of, wait, sixth out of eight books. This one's the opposite, big honking, thick book. It's called Tribe of Mentors. This is basically a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. Kind of like Mastery, where um, it's about people who have accelerated uh, success in their field, some way, shape, or form. Some of these people I'd never heard of before, but then some of them, I think like Ben Stiller's in here, like an actor. Yeah, Ben Stiller. Um, Debbie Millman, who has her own podcast. Stephen Pressfield, who wrote another great book called The War of Art. Kind of like The Art of War, but The War of Art. How to get through the creative process. Um, and it, I just it's one of those that's like a la carte. You don't have to read, you don't sit and read the whole thing. You just kind of, you can't see that right now. But it's set up with large quotes and then a biography and then like two pages about Henry Ford, who I don't know who this is. Um, but this is not my copy. I've marked up and dog-eared a lot of different pages on my copy. But I thought this would be, this would resonate with a lot of different people. Jocko Willink, who I've heard on some podcasts. He's a, uh, he's a Marine who um, now does leadership classes. Um, Josh Waitskin, who, the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, that was a movie that was out a long time ago, and it's about him. Uh, and so I'm sharing that with a cosmic bug. Chris Hadfield, this is my copy, which are the covers ripped, but don't worry, I ordered a, I ordered a hardcover for whoever, um, whoever wins, because the giveaway goes for like 20 days. But Chris Hadfield has a cosmic mug. I just emailed him and said, dude, I read your book, it's super inspiring. It's called An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. This is my copy, you can see the dog ears. Looks like I should go back and read it again, because I was probably paying a lot more attention to the audio book. Um, but I read his book and I reached out and I was like, dude, you're super inspiring. Could I just send you a mug? Because I've just been mailing mugs to astronauts for years because I, I, I think just absorbing how you, you know, there's only like 500 people who've ever been to outer space. Hello, Mindy. Um, and, uh, and to just learn about how they ended up on that path to do something inspiring um, has helped me do inspiring things. That's the Guinness World Record I still have on the wall hanging there. I got that idea after reading his book and learning about his uh, his record of doing the first music video in space. I do have something dog-eared here. Let's see what it was. The fact is that even the least eventful day in space is the stuff of dreams. Um, my main source of frustration, in fact, was that I ever had to sleep. He, had a, he has a Guinness World Record for the first music video ever filmed in space, and he was doing St David Bowie's Space Oddity while floating around in the International Space Station. Uh, he changed the lyrics a little bit, because in that song, the astronaut dies, and Chris didn't want to die. But I emailed this guy, and he was like, sure, here's my address. I would be honored to have a mug. And then he sent me the nicest thank you card that was like, you... Uh, we have it quoted on the website somewhere, but it's like, you create beauty, and that is rare, and to be cherished. So I thought that was really cool, uh, that the guy, the guy who wrote this book, he also has a cosmic mug. So we're going to send this out with a cosmic mug out to somebody. Different copy, not my copy. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, if you have any book recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Just leave a comment. We're recording this live, and then I'll probably repost this maybe on YouTube or something. But we're on my Facebook page right now. So if you have any questions, i um, happy to answer them or... Uh, uh, yeah, recommend some books for me because I've read all these numerous times. Um, not all of that one, but uh, hello over there in Sweden. Last one, also my copy, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Signed by the man himself. He had a big purple pen. Uh, it was gold with purple ink. I, I brought this up to him when I met him and asked him to sign it, and he said, I don't know, and he pulled this, uh, this solid gold pen out, and that was, that was a baller move. 
Uh, I even have some questions in here that I had for him. One about Albert Einstein's ball, uh, Albert Einstein's violin. Um, this is another easy read. It's kind of like a gratitude journey, um, where you can get through it in just a couple days. Uh, but the, my favorite chapter is the end, where he talks about you know our place in outer space and the cosmos, because a lot of it is about math and physics and why you know these things are kind of interesting. And again, it's pretty short, um, so I could even understand. I didn't ever take a physics class or anything, and I could still. It didn't really fly over my head like. He talks about supernovas exploding and how if it were too close, like, the Earth would be uh, wiped out. Um, that stuff is still, you know, it keeps your attention through the whole thing. But the end, you can see I dog-eared just the beginning and the end that I thought were really interesting. Um, so I bought another copy of this that we're going to give out. Plus the, the cover just looks really nice. And it fits with, I don't have any of the green Cosmic mugs here. But I just really liked the cover of it, too. Uh, that's it. So these are eight different books. Um, I guess I, I titled this video Working Towards Mastery because they've all inspired this medium-sized coffee mug that feels like um, a mug that, you know, anyone in the world who's drinking from something like this would, would find something interesting about it, whether it's the way your thumb slides into place here, if you have three fingers in the handle or smaller hand to get four, or, fingers like this and you know what are these marks and once you realize that they're they're from the hand of the potter dipping it down and they match these marks from the finger even the signature that's um, you know these you don't learn these things until uh, you look a little deeper into the art um, or read about it but the signature which just looks like a random symbol it's it represents a mountain landscape with a sun or a moon uh, because I just like the idea of mountains. I just liked that, like thinking of reaching the summit of a mountain is really inspiring. Uh, mountains are really inspiring to me. They just look like big sculptures made by nature. And so I thought that'd be a good signature to put on every pot instead of trying to fit my name on there, just a symbol that describes something inspiring. Um, and it's also inspired by my teacher. He signed his work with a straight line and a circle because he, uh, uh, it reminded him of where he grew up, Minnesota Morris, where it's really flat, like a straight line, just the horizon line and a, the sun rising or setting over the horizon. But I thought the mountains were more inspiring to me, so I put a couple swoops in the signature. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next live video. And if you, if you have any book recommendations, I'd love to hear what, hear what uh, fans think. And I've got some fiction I'd like to get back into the into the groove because I haven't read a fiction book in a while. Chris Hadfield's book, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth, that's inspired by uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, which is a really good fiction book since none of these were fiction. But I'd love to hear what you think. Leave a comment um, if you've got any good book recommendations. I love nonfiction, but I could even use some fiction recommendations. So uh, I'm going to sign off and see you in the next... Uh, See you in the next video, probably on the pottery wheel. All right, peace out.